Hey, what is up everyone? In this video, we're back with another Sea of Thieves comic reading. And in this one, we're doing the first of three issues of the Champion of Souls origin comic. So this follows the story of Pendragon, which if you don't know already, Pendragon played a major role. He's from some of the Tall Tales and the Ventures. And if you want a recap of where Pendragon is now, currently in the Sea of Thieves story, I'll leave a video linked in the card. But let's go ahead and get into this. So this is Sea of Thieves Origins Champion of Souls issue number one. And we'll be covering the other issues in future videos. My name, Pendragon, is one of great renown. It is unlikely that when you hear the name Sir Arthur Pendragon that I am the first person of whom you think. However, it has long been my dearest hope that I may be the second. My family line has long had the gifts of wealth and privilege, but we were never encouraged to sit about and bask in it. After all, we have quite a legacy to uphold. I was trained in the arts of adventure and the ways of the British gentleman. There was no match for me among my peers, whether we were pursuing fencing or studying the ways of magics and the occult. I attained quite a reputation among those who explored the world and learned of the supernatural. It was in this way that I came to the notice of a friend of my father's, Hockaday, Commodore of the 64th Fleet. It was he who would send me on my earliest adventures, including one for which I would become infamous. And thanks to a nefarious wizard, I would learn there were things in this world beyond my understanding. Make no mistake, after those events, I made every effort to retake my place in polite society. I even accepted a post working for the British Museum in Artifact Retrieval. But in this endeavor, I would come to work for two brothers who had once been clerks of the museum. In the course of their stamping duties, they had come across a strange scroll and thus uncovered a great mystery. So it was that I found myself again drawn to the supernatural. And so it was I found myself entombed with the secret passages of the Great Sphinx struggling to escape and facing the undead for the first time. My fate was set. Lad, it rather seems like these ghoulish shorts are drawn to you, doesn't it? Indeed, Hakadai, it has led me to think that I might be uniquely situated to investigate such unusual supernatural phenomenon. I say, I have long needed someone cut out to explore the stranger places my men have come across and we would be happy to assist in any way in exchange for a first claim on new artifacts. Thus was a position created for me by a joint endeavor between the British Navy and the British Museum. The Navy would provide me with a manned ship and leads on supernatural locations, and the Museum would add my discoveries to their own collection. Alas, this position failed to be the adventure I had hoped for. My missions tended to fall into one of two categories. Either this supernatural danger Hakadai worried about were animals whose habitat we disturbed. And to make the place safe, I was forced to slay magnificent natural creatures. Or, far worse, the supernatural was merely a practice of another people that Hakadai's men did not understand. But once an empire has made up its mind to destroy a thing, there is no adventurer that can stop it, no matter how hard he pleads. I began to retreat to my own study. I longed for an ancient evil to fight, another chance to save rather than conquer. It was there that Hakadai came to me one last time. My boy, I have a matter only you can resolve. Please, Hakadai, no more killing. I just don't have the stomach for it any longer. Not a problem, boy. The man I wish you to rid me of is already dead. What? Hakadai told me of a pirate named Richard Cavendish, an honorable man who had lost his family estate in wars on the continent. Left with nothing but his ship and crew, he became a pirate, successfully stealing from both sides. They were in desperate times, and Cavendish hated the enemy more than he hated the Empire, so he made him a privateer in their service, until, without warning, he disappeared. I assumed he had made his fill and retired, and I never held it against him. Then, last week, my men found something strange off the coast of Dragon Skull Isle. They showed me this image. That's his ship, the Black Witch. I'd know it with my eyes closed. But they couldn't get near it without being attacked by flying demons and ghastly specters. The men say it's cursed. 
Looking at that image, it stirred in me a feeling I had feared I'd never feel again. A desire to chase the unknown. Get me my ship and a capable crew. I want to see this thing. I set sail that night and was at sea three days before we reached the location he had given. I was sure the ship would be gone, but it was not. Sir, why be that ship anchored here with nothing else about? That is exactly what I aim to find out, my good man. I know not from whence their ordinance came, but it tore through our ship as if it was made of paper. Captain, they're tearing us apart! Get me close enough to board them and then make for a safe distance. The vast ye demons? No sooner did I set foot aboard the Black Witch than I knew I had met my destiny. This ship and I, our fates were intertwined. Their very planks of the deck felt uniquely suited for my feet. In the captain's cabin, I found Cavendish's journal. He told a tale of a cursed crystal skull of souls that had caused this foul end, but also so much more. I needed to set this man free of his curse. It was there I again met those cursed skellies with which you are now so familiar. Where before I believed them mummies, now their nature was laid plain. I had to know how this could be. So I resembled the man's soul and broke the curse of the Black Witch. Sir Pendragon, you have saved me. Name the reward you wish, and if it is within my power, I shall give it. My good man, you owe me nothing. But I would know, to where did you disappear to find all the wonders I've seen today? If, like me, you seek a world of sea monsters and great legends, I shall direct you to the Sea of Thieves. Every adventure you've ever read in fiction, there it is real, and they have need of a good man like yourself. Adventures beyond measure? Treasures beyond counting? These things Cavendish promised, he only asked one thing. I have left my daughter behind there, a hardy tyke, sure mighty pirate in her own right. I give you the Black Witch, and I ask that you employ her on it, and when you have no further use of it, leave it to her. You have my word. And as I set Cavendish's soul free, so went the curse on the ship. My crew was able to approach the ship so that I might bring over stock and sailors. I allowed them to choose which ship they stayed with. And then we parted ways, and they returned home with a letter to Hockaday. What does he mean he's sailing for fabled shores? I'd never see the old man again, but I'm grateful for him sending me on that mission. For without him, I'd never have discovered Cavendish or the Black Witch and I would never have met my destiny on the Sea of Thieves. Come aboard, men. These sailors need our help. But, sir, is that a kraken? Hey, my boy, it is. But that's not possible. We're on the Sea of Thieves now. Anything's possible here. Concentrate fire on the tentacles holding the ship. Let's get those men back in the water. Have at thee. We didn't sink the beast, but we made him drop the ships. To make in the demon of the sea, no, we don't go down easily. And to our new friends, welcome to the Sea of Thieves, Arthur Pendragon. That's Sir Arthur Pendragon. Not here it ain't. Ain't no king of queen on the Sea of Thieves. We're all equal here, and your fancy title don't mean nothing. That's okay, we won't hold it against ye. Somehow to me, that idea was more outlandish than the Kraken. It upended every concept I had been taught since my childhood and it couldn't have made me any more excited. To the Sea of Thieves. We spent that night ashore, and in the morning I asked myself a question. If title and lineage didn't matter, how does one become great? The answer, of course, by reputation. So I set out to become the champion for right and justice on the Sea of Thieves. This brave new world of wild equity was a wonder to behold, but I knew that such things only work if there are those who are willing to protect the weak and offer a boost to those who are low. And once one good person sets the standard, others will rise up. That is what I believed. Let's search the outpost. I want to know what happened here. Hey, sir. I wish that I could say I hadn't seen destruction like this before, but I had once been a harbinger of just such damage. Over here! Heave! When you're ready, Tell me what you saw. It was just a normal day. We were going about our business. I was selling drinks. Then I heard the screaming. 
the Miskelis, they are walking right up out of the water, destroying everything in sight, taking the people captive. Then the ship came with even more Skellies. They started taking the other villagers on there. I thought they would take me. I was only saved when the tavern collapsed and took his arm off. Send the word out to everyone we know. These creatures need to be dealt with. I had not counted on the fact that all that reputation would need to be cashed in so soon. Their home was burnt to rubble. Every last man, woman, and child taken for goodness knows what purpose. We cannot allow that to happen. The Sea of Thieves is free and everyone has the same opportunities. That means there is no navy to save us when a threat like this looms. It is incumbent upon us to work together. I could see the pirate's interest was flagging. This horror called for a leader of action, and I needed to show I was one. Let's team up and go wreck some skellies. Huzzah! Let it never be said that I do not know how to play to my audience. With our combined intelligence, we were able to reach out to much of the Sea of Thieves and discover who had knowledge of the skeletons. It was in these days that I first remember hearing the name Madame Olivia, though at the time I knew nothing of the Order of Souls. It seems we have a champion in the making. I wish to send him a letter. I recall receiving her post in particular because every other message we had gotten was in regard to what the skeletons had already destroyed. Hers spoke of what would be destroyed next. When first we arrived, I thought perhaps she had been misinformed. The locals seemed blissfully unaware of the cursed monsters. In fact, her information had been so good that we had arrived early, and we were to bear witness to their terrifying arrival. It was a fierce and far-ranging battle. They fought with superhuman strength and determination but we were free men and women with a passionate desire to stay so. And we would not trade the tyranny of kings for the tyranny of the damned. When at last we ground their bones to meal beneath our swords, we brigands and bandits stood as brothers and sisters united in a cause. And the significance of this victory did not go unnoticed. Bring him to me at once. I believe we have at last located our champion of souls. To be continued. Alright, that covers the first issue of the Champion of Souls comic. That was, I think, a really interesting comic and a nice look at Pendragon's backstory. I'm curious to see where this continues. If you remember from the previous comic readings that we've done on the channel so far, all the other ones have been single-issue comics, so they focused on a character such as Madame Olivia here, and it told their backstory and stuff and how they started with their faction, such as um, how the Reaper's Bones started, or the Order of Souls and the Merchant Alliance. That's basically what those other Origin comics covered. So they only had one issue and it kind of ended the story there. This one is interesting where we see a continuation that's going to happen from this. So I'm interested to see how this story progresses. We'll be covering the other two comics in this story in future videos. So make sure to stay tuned for that. But if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great to the like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below what you thought about this first issue. I'd love to hear what y'all think about it, but until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye y'all.